Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. That's right, we got a new setup. I got a new computer. You can actually see me, which is brilliant. See the green, you got the green screen working. Uh, we got, you guys can actually see the video I'm playing. You can actually hear me. Everything's good. Um, if you guys, uh, have any other criticisms, obviously, please let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with the new setup I have. The fact I'm able to keep doing what I'm doing, keep giving you guys reaction videos. This guy, I'm giving you guys better quality reaction videos. Um, that's something that means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with the situation I'm in right now. Uh, and I hope to continue to give you guys better quality reaction videos. What I need y'all to do right now is hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And we're we'll going to get into our first video in this new setup, which is from Nick Crowley. This is YouTube's Darkest Iceberg Part 2. So we're going to get right into this. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys ready? Of course you're ready. Let's go. Icebergs, one of nature's most awe-inspiring creations, both beautiful and treacherous. By the way, I know the audio might not be the greatest for the video. It's literally until I get a better speaker. I do plan to get a speaker. I just don't have one at the moment. But I do want to do a reaction with this setup. So that's the only reason. If the quality of the video is not the best, that's the only reason. Welcome back to part 2 of YouTube's Darkest Iceberg. With this format, each level will progressively get darker and darker until we reach the very bottom, where I'll go over some of the content here that, to this day, leaves me utterly disturbed. And like last time, I'll be having some friends join me in guiding you down to the- A boy Nexpo! We know Nexpo, we've done the reactions to him before, he's as the uh, most disturbing things from around the internet. So yeah, he's the- we know Nexpo very well. Don't expo! Very depths of this iceberg. But unlike last time, things are about to get much, much more disturbing. So sit back, relax, and I will see you all at the very bottom. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, it's your boy Carcass Husband back to you with another. This shit's so fucking dead. God, his voice! Man, this man's voice is just disturbing. Oh my god, it's too dark. Oh my god. Oh, I don't like this man's voice. I'm gonna keep playing, but oh, his voice gives me chills. Difficult. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the pedophiles. Romeo Lacoste. Well, thanks for making it clear what this one is. I couldn't fully tell, but thanks for making it clear. Pedophiles, Jesus. Once considered one of the most prominent tattoo artists in the celebrity sphere, Romeo ran a YouTube channel centered around his career, where he would accrue fame after racking up over 1 million subscribers. Though before long, predatory accusations began to emerge about his interactions with young fans behind the scenes. In March of 2019, a series of DMs and text messages between Romeo and two girls would be released, with the messages coming from back in 2016, when the girls were just 14 and 15 years old. Despite their young age, Romeo sent them a manifold of vile and sexually charged messages, all the while knowing full well he was chatting with minors. And from then on, his once enjoyable life began to cascade down and act Okay. Sorry about that. I went to kill this dude, and for some reason, every fucking cord decides to connect to my foot here. Let's continue. Agonizing staircase of anguish as more allegations were lobbied in his way. His ex girlfriend went on record and claimed she too was groomed by him, being only 14 at the time they started dating, while he was 19. 
There was little silly Romeo could say to defend himself in the wake of these allegations. And as predators usually do, he somehow managed to make things even worse for himself by opening his foul mouth. Um, there's a part where you say, are you willing to do it before uh, yes. you turn 18? Yes, so let me address that. So that, I'm not gonna deny that was real, but here's here's the twit, here's, here's the big loop about it. Here's the big sort of like, you know, fabrication, smoke and mirrors or whatever that everyone's not getting to see is that you know, the, a lot of these girls, let me, I'll just make a quick backtrack, I'll keep it really short. It is now clear that Romeo is in fact yet another statistic in the long line of pathetic internet predators who have gone unpunished. And this has not stopped him from continuing his career as an influencer. Despite his channel floating dead like a bloated corpse in the murky waters of YouTube history, he has gone on to grow a sizable following on TikTok, many of whom are unaware of his disturbing history. I could have been yeah it's easily it's easy to see how people can just go from one place to another and those people not know who the who he is and what his history is um and when that happens it gives just predators like him a new chance to do that a new chance to go after someone else and it's actually messed up the fact that people are able to do that. Been a predator. In what may go down as one of the most sussy self reports on YouTube, a creator by the name of Glendon Cameron would post a video in 2021 titled, I could have been a predator, that R. Kelly energy is different and all consuming. Okay. In it, the 55 year old man shares a story about sleeping with a 17 year old girl. Apparently, she had told him that she was actually 21, and yet despite discovering she was still a senior in high school while he himself was over 40 years old, he made the decision to continue sleeping with her for the next five years while persisting to admit he had much similar instances with other young girls. And I was like, I need you to tell me something. How old are you? And then she got very silent and she said, I'll be 18 in four months. And you know what I kept doing? I kept f***ing her. On top of his 1,000. What's the could have been? Where's the could have been? Because you are. That's a predator. What do you mean you could have been? What? You're a predator, dude. You're not could have been. You are. As an IQ among us strategic move to confess to this, he would also go on to express sympathy for R. Kelly, comparing themselves as they both seem to have an appetite for younger girls. I have a similar appetite to R. Kelly. I like young women. Before further dismissing claims that R. Kelly was a predator by saying, R. Kelly is being portrayed as a predator, right? Did he hold a gun to these women's heads? Currently, Can I fight? Where does this man live? Wait, but this man's 55 old. I hope his time comes quickly. I hope your time comes quickly, boy, because your ass is stupid. Your ass don't know. Your ass is danger to any young woman around. You ain't could have been. You are 100% a predator. You are a messed up mother effing predator. Clendon runs a channel called the Institute of Economic Thought. Okay, why the f do predators always title their sh like this, like there's some kind of pretentious intel- I don't know, yeah, cause that's, that, the, the fucking name of that is horrible. Intellectual. We see right through you, buddy. Shut the fuck up. It has over 100,000 subs- I love this guy cause this guy loves to swear. He really loves to swear. Subscribers, not to mention his other countless pages hosting utterly garbage content. EDP 445. Oh, I know him. By the way, for anyone who's complaining that I'm pausing too much, you can kiss my ass. I don't care. What was probably one of the most explosive stories in all of 2021 YouTube. EDP was a once popular creator who had been caught attempting to meet a 13 year old girl whom he had been sending explicit messages to for months. We have you talking to Sophie, correct, yes or no? Right. And before we get into the messages, there was sexual content involved, yes or no? Right. And you said Correct. Okay, all right. So what brings you out here today? Oh, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake. 
This led to the instantaneous removal of his YouTube channel and what many assumed to be the end of his online career. As on top of this, the infamous cupcake incident was far from the first time allegations have come out against him. It would seem he has a long history with messaging minors. Interestingly, in spite of the immense backlash he's faced, he is still attempting to make a comeback to this day, having been caught on sites like Vimeo, TikTok, and of course, YouTube, where he recently started a new channel within just a few weeks of Nick starting this video. Though all of these accounts, to our knowledge, have since been taken down, the fact he's still trying to carve his- Okay, what's interesting about that is there were many other people worse than him you might want to disagree with me on this but there were people who are worse than him on youtube still and their channel still exists so why is he being removed i'm not saying he shouldn't be don't take this don't lie. i'm not saying he shouldn't be removed but i'm just curious why he's being removed while others who are worse than him get to stay on that's what i'm confused with his silly self back into the online sphere after everything he's done means that this likely won't be the last time we hear from him. What saddens me the most though is the fact that these new pages quickly gain a considerable amount of fanfare in their short lifespans as many of his fans have forgiven him for his predatory ways. Sad. Agreed. Plasma Master Don once considered a wholesome figure by masses on the internet, known for his shitty covers of popular songs. God, you look like someone who. I'm sorry. Some figure by masses on the internet, known for his. Sh you look like a predator. I am sorry, but you do. Oh, you look like one too much. Actually, I don't like it. Ugh. Shitty covers of popular songs. <laughs> It would eventually be publicly unveiled by the one and only Nicholas Crowley that this feeble elderly man, Donzel Owens Jr., was actually a convicted sex offender. Called it. But perhaps the most surprising development came in the weeks following the expose Nick made about him, as the dawn would soon brutally die after this. The plot twist of Plasma Master Dawn's anti-redemption arc on YouTube truly remains one of the most captivating stories ever to unfold in this platform, and shows us yet again that even the most wholesome personalities on camera are still oh. capable of doing some of the greatest evils behind stories ever to unfold. Owens Jr. was actually a convicted sex offender. So I need to go back for some reason. Called it. But perhaps the most surprising development came in the weeks following the expose Nick made about him. As the dawn. One would soon brutally die. Why did you label as brutally died? He did. He died from an ill. I know this guy's a messed up human being let's face that fact but the title of brutally died will be is just weird to me because he did it after this the plot twist of plasma master dawn's wholesome personalities on camera are still capable of doing some of the greatest evils behind cl those doors seven super girls Perhaps one of the most high-profile predator cases in YouTube's history, Seven Supergirls was a channel that had amassed over 9 million subscribers. Its content ranged from shopping hauls to skits to daily routines, but at its core was always centered around a variety of teenage girls, as this was also the page's targeted demographic, at least as it appeared on the surface. Its creator, a man named Ian Rylett, was also the founder of a variety of other teen-based channels, with a man garnering a staggering 17 million subscribers in total. And for years, he operated these channels with minimal controversy, earning him an enormous amount of wealth in the process. As is the normal life cycle with channels like these, it would all come crashing down in 2019 when he was accused of molesting one of the underaged actresses he hired. On top of this, Ian would often undress this particular actress and threaten her with fines if she refused to give in to his demands. Upon the allegation being made, it would also be brought to light that the contracts he forced solely to his underage actresses to sign were concerning. 
to say the least. With one line reading, it is likely there will be physical or bodily contact, potentially of an intimate nature. You pedophiles never fail. I want to beat the hell out of this man. For this to be in a contract that he has forced an underage girl to sign. Because an underage girl doesn't know how a contract works. Let's just be honest, like most underage like girls don't fully like don't read their own contracts, don't fully know how that works. So him to force them to sign and have that be on there is ridiculous. Fuck this guy. Well to disgust the world around you. The discovery eventually led to Ian's arrest to which he would plead guilty of molestation and be charged with lewd or lascivious battery of a minor. And what was his punishment, you may be wondering? Life in prison? That'll do. 20 years? I'll take that. 10 years? Better than nothing. 5 years? Okay, you're pushing it. 1 year? You are joking, right? No, how about 90 days? Yeah, he got s What? 90 days? The justice system is so- Of course it's, it's fucking Florida, of course it is. They don't give a shit about anybody who lives there. Sentenced to three months in prison. Anyway, Ian's channels were terminated by YouTube, and that's the end of Seven Supergirls. Fake Challenges Though the focus of this section has solely been on creators, in reality the majority of the predators here on YouTube are hiding in the audience. Very early on, Disturbed individuals discovered that if they could find little-known YouTube channels run by young kids, they could coerce them into performing lewd acts for them, and they did so under the guise of fake challenges. Essentially, the commenter would propose a challenge they made up themselves in order to have the child creator get into a suggestive pose or perform an action with sexual undertones. For example, one of these predators would comment on a child's video saying they should try the bend over challenge or the shower challenge, spurring kids to film themselves doing said action and uploading it to YouTube, completely unaware that they were providing sexualized content for the commenter. It's an ex- That is messed up. Oh. Extremely sickening practice, though one that thankfully has been drastically reduced through YouTube removing the comment sections on videos made by minors. This section has been brought to you by Mama Max. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm better than Nexpo and Nick Crowley combined. If you had to compare both of us, you'd probably say they're like, uh, they're like Krillin and I'm like, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye bye now. Thank you so much, Max. Everyone make sure to go not subscribe to him. From here on out, things are going to get even less brand friendly and demonetization is pretty much inevitable. So I wanna give a massive thank you to our sponsor, Upside, for making this video financially possible. It is no secret that here in the US, inflation has been a little rough lately. And by a little rough, I mean historically awful. And has led to most of us trying to find new ways to cut back by driving less or dining out less. But Upside offers a unique solution to this. Upside is an app that gives you cash back on your everyday purchases without the use of any special credit card. All you do is go on the app find a local offer that looks good to you, pay as usual, and then check in your purchase on the app, which will automatically earn you cash back. And the offers here are typically far better than your standard credit card. For example, I used Upside to get 5% cash back at a local restaurant, and even got 15 cents per gallon cash back from the gas station. These deals really do add up quickly and go a long way in counteracting the effects of inflation. Plus, it is so easy to implement and completely free. So if this is something you're interested in trying out, download the free Upside app and use code Crowley to get $5 or more cash back Back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more. First, check out Upside. If they're sponsoring him, they must be good. So sponsor Upside. So go get Upside and see how it is. Let me know. Bailey Social. Linda Rogers' last video. Linda Rogers' last video refers to a tragic event that occurred back in February of 2018. Around this time, there had been a series of natural gas leaks that unfortunately resulted in a number of houses quite- I know this one. I know this one well. This is on next. this was on Nexpo's disturbing things from around the internet, I'm pretty sure. Literally exploding in an instant. 
These leaks led to the deaths of nine people across North and Central Texas, including the subject of this video. The video itself is a time lapse of 12 year old Linda Michelita Rogers, who was supposed to be included in a morning style vlog video she was creating. Unfortunately though, this video would never be completed, as shortly into the time lapse, one of these freak gas explosions occurs. In just a matter of three frames, you see Linda, electricity, and flames, and then smoke before it cuts to black. Linda did not survive the blast, leaving only this chilling clip to show what she was doing in her final moments, which her family has since uploaded to bring awareness to this terrifying phenomena. Body in a Cooler This entry deals with a clip that surfaced back in 2020, titled, Found Dead Body in a Cooler at a Lake in which a group of kids discover a long abandoned cooler in the woods. This is gang, I dug deep all over it. It's so, so bad. There's maggots, oh no, fuck that. They're goofing around and laughing, as most kids at their age would, but things begin to grow more serious as they notice it's emitting a terrible smell. This group takes turns daring each other to open it, until someone finally does. And what they find inside is nearly indescribable. It's impossible to tell what it really is, or was, as the cooler was completely filled with what the kids first assumed to be dead fish. Though in the last two minutes of the video, they begin to realize that this may very well be something far more sinister, and they decide to call the police. The footage ends with no resolution, leaving an air of uncertainty surrounding their discovery. Though within the comments, an update would soon emerge describing the alleged truth behind the substance found in the cooler, which read, Update on this situation. It was a dead infant that was neglected and abandoned in that cooler filled with water. Location will not be disclosed due to privacy reasons. The validity of this video is something that is yet to be confirmed, meaning that this could quite possibly be a hoax, but something about the contents of that cooler seems all too real. Granny Ripper Granny Ripper refers to a video on YouTube depicting the infamous Russian serial killer, Tamara Samsonova. Samsonova was arrested in July. I know of you, you weird old woman. I know you know your dang story, you crazy ass woman. I have 2015 on suspicion of two murders, but is now suspected of nearly 15. She has since become infamous, not only for her crimes, but for her old age, as at the time of her arrest, she was nearly 70 years old. Though this didn't stop her from committing some of the most gruesome crimes imaginable. In the YouTube video, serial killer Granny Ripper filmed footage Russia. We see Samsonova standing in an inconspicuous blue parka captured by her apartment CCTV. Carefully, she walks back and forth, bringing out what appears to be a covered pot. On the evening of July 26, the body of Samsonova's roommate, Valentina Nikolaevna Ulanova, was discovered decapitated with severed limbs, with it later being determined that within this very container was the actual head of Ulanova. Samsonova would be arrested on July 29, 2015, thanks to the damning CCTV footage that has now been leaked to YouTube. Though what many have found most chilling about this video was the smile she gives upon her capture even blowing a kiss to the camera, clearly showing a complete lack of remorse for all the death she caused. Streamer finds a body. There have been a few instances of streamers happening upon a deceased person. This entry specifically refers to a video in which two streamers named Goo Cheese and Stop Speeding are streaming a casual walk down a sidewalk. Goo Cheese then mentions that when she had been walking by the same spot earlier, she had passed a homeless man who was not moving though they had assumed that they were simply sleeping. However, upon walking past that same location, the two noticed that the man is still there. Oh my god, this guy? Or no, it's not this guy. Someone was in like a bed sheet and I thought they were a dead body. You're not a dead body, are you? The two joke around, attempting to get the attention of the man and wake him up. Though there is no response, this leads to... I know he's still there, which probably is suspicious and worrying for them, but the fact is, don't ever mess with a homeless man. Don't just walk up to a homeless man and try waking him. Because you don't know what that person's like, you don't know what their mental health's like, you don't know anything, you don't know what they're going to react, so just leave... I... In most situations, I'd say leave the homeless people alone. Over in this situation, I don't know how long they've been waiting, and the guy's still there, I don't know on that, so maybe 
it's different, but even then, I still wouldn't try to, like, wake them up or anything. I would let call, like, 911 and let them deal with it. To one of the individuals feeling the arm of the man, only to discover that the body is freezing cold. The stream then devolves to chaos as Gucci breaks down crying, with the reality setting in that the man has passed. No! It's not okay! <laughs> no, it's not okay! It's a tragic scenario, not just for the man whose life was lost, but also for the streamers who undoubtedly live with the trauma of discovering a dead body, and all while they're just trying to have a normal stream with their audience. The last selfie. Yeah, that's weird. That's gotta be uncomfortable for them. Um, I'm not gonna lie. The way she was crying, I thought she knew the guy. Like the goddamn, like she was crying with someone. But that was emotionally hurting for her. But I, was, I guess she, you know, if you're a young girl, find a dead body. It's gotta be disturbing in that. Photo. The last selfie photo is a video showing what looks to be dozens of people clinging to the wheels of a plane as it prepares to take off. It quickly becomes clear that their idea here is to ride the plane the same way one would hitchhike a train. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. This video was recorded in August 2021 in Afghanistan, mere hours after the United States announced that they were withdrawing all military presence in the area. Many Afghan people realized that this country would soon fall to the Islamist extremist Taliban and did whatever they could to escape. And within this footage, we see a group of people attempting to do just that. Though their attempts would be futile, as everyone who hung onto the plane either were crushed when the wheels shifted back into the plane's body or fell to their deaths soon after liftoff. Their actions are unfortunately reflective of sheer desperation to escape, especially considering that even if they had managed to hang on somehow, their bodies would not have been able to stand the extreme cold of that altitude, meaning that they were not going to make it either way. Thankfully, the video cuts off before we see the devastation firsthand, but the aftermath was likely extremely brutal. You have to be desperate, I would think. You would have to be very desperate to want to cling on under a plane, plane's wings, and that, just to escape the area. Like, that, you gotta be desperate. And I feel like those people put themselves in a no-survive situation just to get out of there. Like, that's insane. Schizophrenia Dad refers to a video in which the uploader, Nusi Girl 2008 records her father in various stages of what appears to be a mental break which is confirmed by the text at the beginning of the video, stating that this footage was recorded on the way to a psych ward. Hello, Bride of Christ. This is your little servant boy, King of America. It starts out with a dad addressing the camera, rambling nonsensically, before a darker turn. The video cuts, and we can see the uploader's dad hanging out on the side of a car. You can hear the family members pleading for him to get back into the vehicle though it's obvious that this episode had left him completely out of control. The video ends with footage of him flashing passing cars and smoking a cigarette while continuing his rambling. Delving into the comments section, the uploader reveals that prior to this video, her dad had been missing for weeks before returning and dragging her brother out of bed. Her comments go on to say, My mom and I didn't know until we heard my brother cry out for help, but by then we were in the car and driving away. We thought he was going to kill my brother, but he came back and my brother told us he had drowned our dog in the river. He stripped naked, so mom said, time to go to the hospital. It turns out the man in this video is named Roland Cannard, and unfortunately, he didn't make it very long after this video was recorded, as he died of suicide on November 25th, 2001, about a year after the footage was taken. Rapire. Rapire, rap I'm gonna assume is he probably found, like, in his head accepted that he's not in a good spot and in his mind that was the best way to protect his family i guarantee you that was his thought process refers to another haunting bit of cctv footage in it we see a bus preparing to let people off as people walk by idly on the sidewalk about 45 seconds in as riders exit the vehicle a black car recklessly pulls up behind the bus and comes to a stop 
A figure then emerges from the car and grabs one of the riders, a girl who was just 15 years old, and then forces her to the ground. After a few seconds off camera, they come back into frame and the man forces the person into the car. They then quickly take off into the night. This is a pretty cut and dry kidnapping, but what's most disturbing about this video is how the bystanders simply don't react. That's the thing with it. It's, um, what the girl described as bystand bystander syndrome. Where no one's actually willing to help. They just all kind of watch as what goes on and almost seem to just be like waiting for someone else to react. If you see someone in trouble, just do something. For the people who go, oh, well, you don't, you know, you don't know how they're going to react if you get involved. We don't know what they're going to do to the person who's there fucking taken. Just do something. They either stand by and watch or continue their night as if nothing happened. A true case of the bystander effect in action. Yes. By the bystander effect. That's what it's called. The Blue Hole Dead Diver. The Blue Hole is a famous diving spot located in Sinai, an area a few kilometers north of Dahab, Egypt. Since it's a sinkhole that reaches a depth of nearly 400 feet and lacks a current, its popularity amongst divers has remained consistent for a long time. However, this popularity has also led to it being one of the most frequent sites for diving fatalities in the world, with anywhere between 130 to 200 deaths occurring at the spot in recent years. This wide range of estimation means that you never know what you might find on a dive. And unfortunately, this YouTube video shows a diver coming face to face with the mortality of their hobby. The short video taken at a depth of 367 feet shows the POV of a diver, shining his light on what appears to be a deserted oxygen tank. Though as he approaches, it quickly becomes obvious that the oxygen tank was attached to a long dead diver, who must have underestimated the danger of the blue hole. The identity of this diver has never been revealed. Annalise Michelle Audio Throughout a 10 month span beginning in the year of 1975, a 23 year old woman named Annalise Michelle would undergo a series of exorcisms to rid her of what the priest believed to be a demonic possession. In reality, Annalise Michelle had been suffering from numerous seizures caused by epileptic psychosis, which was mistaken for possession. This led to a staggering 67 exorcisms being performed in secrecy on the woman, all at the expense of her receiving legitimate help for her medical issues. Throughout the span of these sessions, various records would be made documenting the girl's behaviors, which would be uploaded to YouTube years later, providing some truly haunting audio. <laughs> In the end, Annalise would never be cured of her supposed possession, and would ultimately die as a result of constant grueling exorcisms, as well as malnourishment she suffered as a result. Here comes our boy next, Bo. Finding a friend. On the evening of December 13th, 2019, a man by the name of Andre Grady had disappeared from his home in Newport, Virginia. Having been paralyzed in a drive-by shooting at the age of just five, the disappearance was especially concerning as his lack of mobility made it unlikely he left on his own accord. In the day following Andre last being seen, a group of his closest friends would band together to form a search party while live streaming the whole thing to further spread awareness in the community. Hey, yo, we down here at 24th and Marshall, yo, we doing a search. So I'm just gonna guess you're the one that did it. That's my guess. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my guess. Party for Dre, man. This shit don't make no sense out here, yo. As the group continues filming, they eventually stumble across Andre's wheelchair marks in the grass leading to a nearby home. And upon checking the crawl space beneath it, they would find Andre's deceased body. Oh man, what bro. Is what is it? Yo, y'all go, 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 go. Oh, and I see a shoe, bro. Oh my 
He was beaten and shoved underneath the house with no motive for the attack ever being discovered. To this day, the mystery of who took Andre's life remains. But what's most heartbreaking about this clip is the fact that those who found him were his closest friends. Is that him? Wait, 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 the police do that. Wait, 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 wait. And the pain in their voices to this day makes this entire video extremely difficult to watch. Man tries to save drowning woman. On what should have been a fun trip to Spain, a group of travelers were spending the day by the sea. When looking for a challenge, one member of their group would jump into the water beneath a short cliff. The current was raging. Though the lady believed that she'd be able to make it out safely. The sea... But I'll say that literally, that would be the last thing I would think if someone told me they were going to jump in that. I'd think, okay, you ain't coming out because that looks like something you just immediately would go under. This fury is unmatched, however, and she'd soon grow overwhelmed, getting tossed around like a ragdoll. On the shore overlooking the struggling swimmer, a friend of the woman named Danilia Gagren would jump in and grab her in an attempted rescue. Though he too stood little chance, as the two of them would ultimately succumb to the treacherous water. And standing helplessly above with the camera in hand was Danilia's wife who had no choice but to just stand there to watch them as their lives came to a very unfortunate end. Do you agree with euthanasia? This documentary follows the story of a woman named Michelle Goss as she prepares and then carries out her own euthanization. Je ne l'ai plus, vous savez. Je perds mes mots, je perds la mémoire. Mais c'est très facile de passer de la vie à la mort. Maintenant, s'il vous plaît, euh, je vais abattre cette potion, mais vous plaisantez. Mais enfin, c'est un, c'est un jeu d'enfant. She did this not because of any terminal illness, but rather due to a series of small manageable illnesses. She effectively decided to pass away on her own terms. In the video, we watch as Michelle legally obtains pentobarbital on her 74th birthday, a drug commonly used in places where self-euthanasia is legal. The whole thing is incredibly eerie, despite the fact that Michelle remains completely calm throughout the entire process and never wavers from her impending death. Vous savez, je suis désolé, vous le preneur de son, mais j'ai pas de dernier mot. J'aurais aimé avoir un dernier mot, mais vous savez que Foucault disait, il n'y a plus rien à dire, hélas. On lui a demandé son son, il demande presque qu'il n'y a rien à dire. She even has friends over for a party to celebrate both her birthday and the day she was to die. <laughs> Écoutez, vous voulez vraiment mourir aujourd'hui? Absolument. Vous êtes persuadé de vouloir mourir? Oui. Parce que si je vous buvez ce médicament, Vous endormez, vous allez mourir. Oui. Ça c'est clair. C'est ma volonté. C'est votre volonté. Oui. Alors, je vous dis au revoir. Adieu. Au revoir, Erika. Au revoir, c'est... Michel. Enfin, c'est ma volonté ferme et définitive. Michelle says her goodbyes as a friend makes the cocktail that would end her life in just a matter of minutes. And the video ends with Michelle passing away to the harmony of her favorite music. Mez Kizizna Postrzel- Bro, I'm not even gonna try this. In Poland, a worker strike was taken place to protest the current con- Good on you, Nexpo. Don't insult no one. Just like, nah, nah, try it. Don't try it. Don't follow it, Expo. ...conditions that medical personnel were facing. From what I could gather through some translated articles, it appears that the medics were demanding better resources, sick leave, and overall more balanced benefits. Not everyone agreed with the movement though, as their absence had a direct impact on patients in the area. During this particular video, we see a group of the medics protesting on stage, further explaining their purpose for striking, when out of nowhere, a gunshot rings out. O godzinie 18.30 zapraszamy na naszą konferencję prasową. W... 
nothing in this video is shown, but just off camera and directly in front of the people on stage, a man had taken out a handgun and taken his own life as a way of protesting the strike. There is something incredibly dark about the shock in the faces of those who witnessed this, as everyone's individual reaction was different. One thing is for certain though, and it's that this event that they had just seen is likely going to have a lasting impact on the rest of their lives. Brick Video On the 12th of June 2012, a car filled with two couples and a young child was driving down a two-lane highway in Russia. The car was equipped with a dash cam that would record a large truck passing by. Unbeknownst to them though, the truck was filled with bricks and out of nowhere, one would dislodge and fly directly at the car, crashing through its windshield at an unimaginable speed. Sitting in its direct path was 29-year-old Olga Gaikovich, who would be struck in the head, killing her instantly. Oh my god, they were just driving normally. They were just driving like nothing was thing. They had no... Never would have thought that in the span of a snap of a finger, the life of a, that woman would end like that. Because of a brick just flying out back of a truck. Not thrown, not nothing. It just flies out on, unbeknownst to anyone and ends her life. Wow. This is the ultimate case of wrong place and very unfortunately wrong time. And although this video is very well known, the screams and cries from her husband who had been sitting right next to her is absolutely gut-wrenching. It makes the entire video far too disturbing to show here tonight. Yemen couple drowns. This entry refers to a video from April 12th. I know this one too. This has been on a, this one of his videos before. 2013 that shows a young couple filming themselves in a local body of water. As the two joke around and pose for the camera, the man suddenly loses balance and slides down a steep drop off beneath the surface. As he desperately tries to regain his footing, he then appears to instinctively grab his girlfriend, pulling her into the deeper water as well. They both cling desperately to each other, trying to save themselves from drowning, but they only make it worse. And in an instant, they both disappear, leaving nothing but the serene water and the sounds of nature. Their bodies were found days later. Diving accidents. Many will agree that drowning would be one of the worst ways to go, which makes videos of fatal diving accidents all the more chilling. Most famously, Yuri Lipsky had attempted a free dive in a location known as Blue Hole the same spot mentioned in the previous layer when things went horribly wrong. Yuri's descent became uncontrolled and he fell into the bottom of the ocean way too quickly, causing him to suffer from nitrogen narcosis. This put him in a drunken-like state as he plummeted over 115 meters below the surface. While down there, he fights with his gear before realizing that he would not be able to make it back up and the moments he captured on his camera would be his final on Earth. Another haunting account came from David Shaw, a decorated free diver who had set out on a retrieval mission in a particularly dangerous area. Prior to this, a fellow diver named Dion Dreyer had passed away in that very location, and given the fact that David was one of very few actually willing to do a deep dive in that location, he would volunteer to retrieve the young man's body. He did so while simultaneously trying to break a new diving record, which would be captured by a documentary crew filming the entire process. Support divers will meet him at different depths. They'll bring him food and liquids and check his condition. An hour and a half into the dive, and an ominous message reaches the surface. Uh, Bond's okay. Bond's okay. Though in a tragic case of irony, David, on his descent down, would also perish after becoming tangled 
with the very corpse he set out to catch. The Jim Jones Death Tape 78 The Jim Jones Death Tape 78 is a 44 minute recording of the moments before and during the Jonestown Massacre, a mass suicide slash murder carried out in 1978, where 909 people would tragically lose their lives. The cult, known as the People's Temple, had been convinced by their leader Jim Jones to drink cyanide-laced Kool-Aid under the belief that the group was soon going to be exposed. While those who refused to drink the poison concoctions were forcibly injected with cyanide, the guards had even been instructed to shoot any members who had attempted to flee. Shockingly, all of this was captured by an audio recording that can now be found on YouTube in a slightly edited version. And it's honestly one of the hardest things you'll ever listen to. How very much I've tried my best to give you the good life. But in spite of all of that I've tried, a handful of our people with their lives have made our life impossible. There's no way to detach ourselves from what's happened today. As Jones speaks to his people, you can hear the sounds of death in the background, and most disturbingly, the sounds of children being comforted by their parents as they pass away. Aeroflight 593 Aeroflight 593 refers to the infamous Russian commercial airline crash that killed all 75 people on board. With the plane having fallen from the air not because of some sort of malfunction, but because of an extremely unfortunate mistake. In the cockpit, the pilot would allow his 12-year-old daughter and 16-year-old son to stand alongside him as he flew the plane. He even went as far as to allow his son to take over the wheel as the plane had been in autopilot. However, the son would end up turning the wheel too hard in one direction, causing the plane to switch to manual steering and immediately plummet towards the ground below. From there, the pilots desperately tried to regain control of the falling plane, unaware of what was actually happening. With the whole struggle having been recorded, eventually being posted onto YouTube. The terror in the voices of everyone in the cockpit is extremely dark, and made all the more horrific as the plane crashes into the mountain range below, killing everyone on board. Most tragically, it would later be revealed that if the pilot had simply taken his hands off the wheel, the plane would have automatically corrected itself and re-engaged the autopilot. The Astro World Clips on the 5th of November 2021, Travis Scott had been hosting his annual Astroworld Festival at NRG Park in Houston, Texas, when things erupted into chaos. Upon Travis arriving on stage at approximately 9.02pm, the massive crowd of fans pushed towards the stage, causing one of the most horrific occurrences, a human crush. People were squeezed against the barriers and crushed to the point that many were unable to breathe, all the while desperately calling out for help. But help never came, and instead, over 300 people would be left injured, with 10 sadly losing their lives. For this end, this is why security at concerts and stuff like that need to be taken way more seriously and the people who do concerts need to be watching out for people and the safety of the people in their shows do not just 
not care about the people who come to your shows. Make sure their safety is number one. Entry, picking one video to show the chaos would be impossible, as so many accounts exist on YouTube from that day. And what is most prominent throughout these clips is the helplessness of it all, as the victims were left to their own devices in that crowd. And with the power of that many people pushing against you, death was always inevitable. The Station Nightclub Fire Flashing back to yet another concert disaster, this event took place on the 20th of February 2003. That night, a band called Great White had been performing at a nightclub called The Station, when their pyrotechnics would accidentally ignite the acoustic foam on the walls and ceiling surrounding the stage. Almost immediately, the ve I always felt that the dude behind this video knew something about concerts and knew something about this. Because immediately, he backs up for anyone else that he knew exactly what was about to happen. Then you were set ablaze and covered in a thick black smoke. As a result, the crowd all rushed towards the exit and became trapped due to the high number of people trying to fit through the small doors. Well, it was that mixed with, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, there were two other exits, but no one would let them go through the two other exits. They just told everyone to go to the front door, so that's another reason. Desperate to escape, people would try and shove their way out. But this only made things more jammed. And before long, the smoke would cause many, so tantalizingly close to the exit, to perish. As a result, 100 people would lose their lives. With footage of the event later being posted to YouTube, and what has always stood out to me with this footage is just how fast it all happened, as within just moments, the fate of so many concertgoers was sealed. The Versailles Wedding Hall Disaster Video Perhaps one of the most infamous disaster videos ever taken I know this one I felt oh this one breaks my heart man taken the footage shows a packed dance floor within the Versailles wedding hall in Jerusalem on the evening of the 24th of May 2001 the event itself was a wedding for Karen and Asaf draw a young couple from the area who drew in hundreds of guests who were seen here dancing and having a good time However, things take a drastic turn as the floor below them begins to sag and eventually gives way. That is fucking scary as hell, man. In total, 23 people would fall to their deaths, with hundreds more being left seriously injured. An investigation would later reveal that faulty construction was to blame, along with negligence from the owner. The Beirut Explosion Of all the disaster videos found on YouTube, few are as shocking as those depicting the Beirut Explosion. On the 4th of August 2020, a building known as Warehouse 12, located in the port of Beirut, would catch fire. And having been filled to the brim with ammonium nitrate and fireworks, the blaze would quickly result in an explosion. Following the initial blast, onlookers would record the ordeal in which you can actually see the flashes from the fireworks within the smoke. Although, much to these onlookers' surprise, the destruction wasn't finished yet, as suddenly another explosion would occur with this one being much larger. Within moments, the entire area is seemingly blown to pieces, with the power of the blast alone being enough to cause buildings in the vicinity to crumble instantly, and the blast itself triggering seismic activity equivalent to a magnitude 4.5 earthquake. 
As a result, the area was left completely decimated, with 218 people tragic- Wow! So the thing, this thing had a first explosion, which people filmed because they thought that was it. It's the second explosion with everything in it exploding that caused so much damage. It felt like a big er like earthquake and just took down pretty much the entire city, entire town. Oh my god! ...losing their lives. Much like other disasters of this magnitude, it was captured in numerous videos, all of which proved to be equally as disturbing, with most of these clips eventually finding their way to YouTube. The Challenger Explosion Of all the disasters discussed so far, this one is particularly morbid thanks to a few utterly depressing details. On the 28th of January 1986, the United States attempted to launch a space shuttle named Challenger, only for it to explode just moments into its journey. All seven crew members would sadly lose their lives, with one of which being a woman named Krista McAuliffe. Krista was actually a teacher at the time, who was personally selected to partake in the mission after applying for the NASA Teacher in Space project. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Brian. Simple question. Why you? <laughs> it, it's really hard to say. What's well, a dream come true for you? Oh, it certainly is. And sadly, her entire class had been watching at the time she was killed, along with countless other classrooms across the United States. Making matters even more horrible, the second place finisher for the contest, a woman named Barbara Morgan, was actually present at the launch and served as backup for Krista should she not be able to go. Her reaction to the incident was filmed live. I can't even imagine what must have been going through her mind watching the shuttle explode, knowing that she had so narrowly missed out on being on board. And this isn't even the only disturbing detail, as it would be later theorized that the crew aboard the Challenger almost certainly survived the initial blast. The main cab remained intact despite the explosion meaning that they were still alive and likely conscious as they fell to the water below, with the impact being their true cause of death. That would be scary as heck. Imagine that you are... The, the ship, the, the, the shuttle you're on has exploded, and you're by yourself, you and your group are by yourself in a remaining part that is going directly towards the ocean, and you know you can't do anything. And it's that that causes your death. That would be terrifying. Congratulations on making it to the very bottom of this iceberg, and in turn, the very depths of YouTube. This level is filled with the content here on YouTube that, for one reason or another, truly strikes a chord with me. Some of these entries will be too graphic to show, but I'll do my best to walk you through them regardless. Man in the Suitcase In February of 2020, a woman named Sarah Boone would call 911, reporting that she had found her boyfriend, George Torres, unconscious in a suitcase within their home. According to the woman, the two had been playing a game of hide-and-seek the night before, when Torres decided to hide within an empty suitcase. Unable to find him, Sarah would give up her search and accidentally fall asleep, leaving Torres trapped in the luggage where he would eventually suffocate to death. Or at least that was the story she was trying to tell. Unsurprisingly, this version of events just seemed too bizarre to be believed, and upon investigating the matter further, police would eventually find a video on Sarah's phone that immediately dismantled the narrative she was trying to weave. The video shows the suitcase, with George inside of it, begging and pleading for Sarah to help him, to which she instead ignores him. Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. This is my name. The word up. During the video's runtime, we can see. Okay, so here's my only question: Why is she? In the, why is he in the suitcase? Like, what? What put him in the suitcase? 
that's the only thing. Because he's alive. So it's not like he killed them and put him in the suitcase. He's in the suitcase on his own accord? Like, did he put himself in the suitcase then couldn't get out? And she just chose that as that as her... Because that's clearly how he died. So she chose that as her time to have him die. What was the reason? How did he... How do you them in a suitcase is my question. D. George desperately trying to escape as he presses against the sides of the tiny piece of luggage. But there was quite literally nothing he could do. Those zippers had sealed him in and trapped him at the mercy of Sarah, and her mind was already made up. Torres would eventually die a slow and brutal death due to asphyxiation, with it later being revealed that Sarah had drunkenly forced him into the bag and closed the zipper, ending his life in one of the most chilling ways I could ever imagine. That is messed up. For Our Son. On October 8th, 2008, a video tribute titled For Our Son was posted to YouTube, memorializing a young man who had lost his life in the Jokola High School massacre. The incident took place almost a full year before, on November 7th, 2007, where an 18-year-old named Pekka Eric Ovin would enter Jokola High School with a loaded handgun and begin firing on the students. Tragically, nine people would lose their lives, including the gunman. Knowing this video was made by the parents of a boy who lost their life in the incident makes it all so depressing, as it shows a slideshow of their son growing older and older throughout the years. A growing process that would be abruptly cut short due to his shocking and traumatic death, and one can only imagine the grief that these parents were experiencing and likely continue to experience to this very day, as there's nothing worse than losing a child. Though there's something slightly off about this video, as around halfway through, things take a unusual and unexpected turn. As the young boy in the photos gets older and older, we begin to see what he may have looked like during the time of the shooting, to which it soon becomes apparent that this family son was not actually a victim, and instead, he was the perpetrator, the man behind the massacre. Blind Date that is way messed up. These people did a video in tribute to the man who killed a bunch of people who was the... That's messed the hell up and that's wrong. These parents are messed up. Blind Date was an art piece carried out by John Duncan, a man best known for his extreme and in this case highly disturbing performance art. Leading up to the project, Duncan had experienced the collapse of a long-term relationship, and feeling empty and angry that he had wasted so much time on something that inevitably failed, he wanted to punish himself. This eventually gave him the idea that he would get a vasectomy, and thus take away his ability to ever have children in the future. But being the eccentric artist that he is, he viewed this punishment as an opportunity to base his next performance off, which is where a blind date comes into play. Knowing that he would soon be losing his ability to have children, Duncan decided to use what he described as his last potent seed on this project, and he wanted it to carry a deeper symbolic meaning. So he hatched the idea of purchasing a deceased body, having intercourse with it, and then sewing their body closed before its burial, thus burying his final seed as well. And this is something that he would not only imagine, but actually carry out. What? 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 How does this enter his what wh Why? I just, that's so weird, why? Traveling to Tijuana where a mortician allowed him to use a body at the cost of $80. Duncan's original plan was to film the entire ordeal and then display the film at an art installation. But the mortician forbade him from using a camera, so he instead used an audio recorder to capture the sounds of him and this corpse. To this day, that audio can be found right here on YouTube. Jimmy's Wish This is a channel that I've been wanting to cover for years now, but the graphic nature of it has pretty much ruled out a full-scale deep dive. The videos on this channel consist of a young boy named Jimmy, who is shown laying in a hospital bed, connected to countless tubes and machines that are presumably keeping him alive. The visuals are horrible, as in most clips and images, it's clear that he is suffering and completely unresponsive to the world around him. Which begs the question, how did this happen? Well, the channel itself was set up by Jimmy's father, who claims his son's condition is a result of his doctors suffocating him with a plastic bag. He needs your help now. My son's ribcage is collapsing into his heart and lungs and he is running out of time. His shoulders and hips are broken and disconnected and repeatedly and cruelly denied medical intervention. The doctors know he will clearly die, 
and the doctors know the police will not investigate. My son was suffocated with a plastic bag by two Japanese doctors and two nurses. Though this of course is just one side of the story, as some believe that the father is merely consumed by grief, which has understandably caused him to slowly lose his mind. But either way, the full truth of this channel is not really known today. And putting the disturbing mystery element aside, it is truly one of the darkest and most tragic channels the site has ever seen, as the pain this child and his father are experiencing is all too real. Cultural Philistine. On December 14, 2012, a 20-year-old named Adam Lonzo would enter Sandy Hook Elementary armed with weapons and proceed to start shooting, leading to the deaths of 26 people, not including his mother, whom he would also kill along with himself. Since the slaying, multiple clips have emerged of Lonzo, most notably playing DDR at his local arcade, a game that he was said to be obsessed with, playing for hours and hours on end each day. Though he also had a YouTube channel that went by the name of Cultural Philistine. The reason behind this name itself is still unconfirmed, but one chilling theory has emerged, as users on Reddit would discover an old book from 1988 that too was titled Cultural Philistine. And in a haunting coincidence, the author's name was Cindy Hook, insinuating that Lanza had always planned on making Sandy Hook his target, and the clues were there all along. The videos themselves are quite disturbing, featuring a black screen and just the sound of Lanza's voice. School is such a great place. You get to learn stuff. And become a better person to make a better tomorrow. And I think, well, what is school? School is culture. Basically, it's you know, cultural indoctrination. I don't know why I don't choose to do it. Why am I expecting to accomplish anything? And though this alone is highly distressing, there's one reason why I chose this channel as the final entry for this iceberg. The Sandy Hook Massacre happened all the way back in 2012, and since then, people have poured an obscene amount of time into documenting Lanza's life, pouring over every single online posting, every writing, and any trail he may have left behind. He's by far one of the most well-studied killers in the internet age. But despite all this, Cultural Philistine, his own personal YouTube channel, was only discovered just last year. Despite being live for over a decade, it wouldn't be until 2021 that this channel belonging to Lanza would be found. With the millions and millions of people who have studied Adam Lanza, one of the most evil people to ever exist on this earth, no one ever found his YouTube channel. It just sat there for years and years and years, dormant in the shadows. And if a channel belonging to him could have gone unnoticed for so long, then just imagine what else is out here, hiding in those same shadows. It's a horrifying and fascinating idea all at the same time, and it all truly leaves me to wonder what we'll uncover next. And with that, we have officially reached the end of YouTube's Darkest Iceberg. I want to give a massive thank you to Mama Max, Barely Sociable, Nexpo, and Disturbin. Having you be a part of this is super special to me, and I hope this was special for all of you watching at home, as a fun way to kind of celebrate this amazing genre that we're all part of. And of course, thank you Kadaber, Wendigoon, and Blame It On Jorge, who helped out in part one. I feel so lucky to share this site with all of you, and whoever is not subbed to each and every one of these fantastic creators, you are greatly missing out. I hope to do another big collaboration with some other creators next Halloween, and maybe even every Halloween Halloween here on out if that's something that you all are interested in, because honestly I had so much fun working on this. And finally, I want to thank my amazing patrons, who have helped me out so- Alrighty, everybody. That is it for this reaction video to YouTube's Darkest Iceberg Part 2. I hope you all enjoyed it. It's been- It was a good first video to test this new thing out on, so I was glad to just do it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you all want me to react to in the comments. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all for the next one.